This is what inspired Howard Clifford to build Rhyme City, a place where humans and Pokemon can live side by side. Unlike other regions where Pokemon live in the wild, here we live and work together. No battles, no trainers, no Pokeballs. A stronger, more harmonious world. From all our citizens, welcome to Rhyme City. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. This is Cheap Seat Reviews. Hello, and thank you for listening to Cheap Seat Reviews, the podcast that explores the Hollywood film industry for the greater good. The greater good. No, no Pikachu or nothing else? Pika! Sorry. <laughs> I was waiting you on know, Sam to do it, so I was. I was going to say go. I just noticed Andrew the way he's sitting with Pikachu right behind him. It looks like he's got a Pikachu hat on. Yeah, it does look like he's got the ears and the hat. Yeah. Maybe I do. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe he does. Uh, all right, cool. Yes, yeah, so well, this is episode uh, four hundred and seventy-six. This is the last of our family night. Uh, movie series for the month of Mar uh, April, excuse me. And uh, this episode is, we didn't realize it was going to be so difficult to record, but uh, we are finally here to record this episode today. So I am Sean Allred. What did I say? Did I say the movie? Detective Pikachu. Pokemon, uh, colon, Detective Pikachu. Uh, which makes me Don't think the colon. that they plan on making more live action Pokemon movies. Right. Um, cause they like, also like cashier Charizard. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be a good one. Or, uh, wet nurse Squirtle. Okay. Weird. Okay. Yeah. All right. I don't yeah. know. I'm just thinking of occupations and, and Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, how about it has, but it has to be weird, right? Like firefighter Charizard, you know, like, no, I think, I think more like snow cone maker Charizard would be funnier. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. <laughs> Is it constantly melting and it's just a... Uh, San sanitation worker Pikachu. Yeah. I like it. All, all of these are great ideas, and I'm sure that uh, Nintendo wants to hear them. Sure. Uh, so, and it also got... They had their own, like, little, uh, you know, intro, like, world intro, like Marvel does and Star Trek and Star Wars. Like, they had... So I thought, oh, I guess maybe they're planning on making more of these. I don't know. Uh they want to, I'm for it. Let's do it. I am Sean Allred, and joining me tonight is Andrew, Bill Nahi as the bad guy. Gee, I never would have seen that coming. Jimison. What's up, nerds? <laughs> That's the guy wearing <laughs> Pikachu ears. And a and a Hawaiian shirt. I love your pineapple shirt. You you must Thanks. Be I just I just came from a percussion ensemble concert where we played Caribbean music. Nice. So I'm not a swinger. But I was gonna say that one uh, that here. one pineapple is upside down on your this right the, shoulder. <laughs> this is the only uh, <laughs> Hawaiian shirt I own. So. I just assumed you came from uh, shooting an episode of, with uh, of Psych. So that's why I was well, that would have been good too. Yes, and Sam. Yes. Uh, Beady eyed humans is super creepy. Vector. <laughs> yes, and uh, Sean, I'm going to uh, throw Pikachu into the. Uh, when next time you take a bath, I'm going to throw them in there with you. Okay. Yeah. I think that'd be the best option. Okay. I don't think it would, you know, really, I think he would just get wet. I don't know if it, anything would happen, but he might not like it. We'll see. What yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, that sounds fun. Let's do it. Uh, anyway. Yeah. So this is uh, Detective Pikachu and I'm here to talk about this. So let's pull up a comfy chair and dive in. I don't know why I said that. That was awkward. Um, Anyway, Andrew, what is Detective Pikachu? Uh, well, I'm going to read this in a special way because of how it's written. Okay. Oh, okay. A special way. Yeah. In a world where people collect Pokemon to do battle, a boy comes <laughs> across an intelligent talking Pikachu who seeks to be a detective. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, any any read that starts with in a world. In a world. You have to, you have to read world. it that way. Yeah. 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 
That was a really good uh, um, intro voice guy. Why why have I never heard this voice before? I don't play all my cards at yeah. once, Sean. You've been on this podcast for for, for almost four hundred <laughs> episodes. <laughs> never heard the, it's really uh, just laziness. <laughs> <laughs> like I would have been using you for, intro, for for voiceovers so much if I'd have known that was a thing. In a world. Yeah. I I would have to use uh some sort of you know octave lowering or, or pitch I lowering. That. I can do all uh, that. Because I can do the voice, but uh, sadly, I guess the boys haven't dropped far enough yet. I'm not yeah. that old. You're not uh, that to deep. make it right. Yeah. Yeah. Gravity's still working though. I'm getting I mean, there. I it I think it still sounds pretty good. It would be good. To, you mean like, like just have you record that for all the all the episodes, like pre-record it, and it would be a, a clip that I would play. But I could have it heavily modulated, and I could add reverb and echo. Right. Yeah, we can just like we can. Oh look, I'm adding more work for myself. Never mind. Let's just stop. Uh, I don't want to do that. Uh, so this is 2019. Yeah, Detective Pikachu with um. Uh, Justice Smith, who we saw in uh, most recently in Dungeons and Dragons, and of course Ryan Reynolds as the Pikachu, and uh, and a bunch of and a nice other little cast. Ken Watanabe, we get we get to see him, which is cool. I haven't seen him since whatever Chris uh, Chris Nolan movie he has going on because he seems to like to use him a lot. Uh, Catherine Newton as Lucy Stevens, who I don't. I don't recognize her from anything, but apparently she's uh oh she's uh she's in she's old Cassie in Quantumania, the the third Ant Man movie. <laughs> old Cassie, old Cassie. <laughs> I guess she's grown up Cassie because she's not. <laughs> there's little Cassie and then there's grown up Cassie, so she's she's grown up Cassie. Um. So. Uh. Anyway. <laughs> You, you forgot about Ken Watanabe. I just... No, I didn't. Did you say his name? I literally just said Ken Watanabe, who's coming off of another Christopher Nolan film. Oh, I missed that. I'm sorry. I was chewing. It's okay. You were reading. Carry on. We'll fix you it were, in post. You were excited about... <laughs> I just wanted to say his name. I did. Uh, Bill Nye, of course, and uh, a bunch of other people who I don't really know, except the the guy at the beginning, the friend at the beginning, who I'm pretty sure is the cab driver from Deadpool. Yes, yeah, it uh, is. Yeah, yeah. So I think he was just in there because he's pals with Ryan Reynolds, right? Like that's like that's got to be the reason. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, was so was this our this was whose first time was this for for y'all watching? Well, it was my first time. It was not my first time. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna be interested to see because this was also my second time watching it as well. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how this goes. So we'll start with five word reviews, and as always, we start with uh, Sam. Um, yeah, sure. I've got a an interesting one here, and that is uh, Pika 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 Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> I missed, I I didn't write anything down honestly. Um it, it, this this is this movie serviceable. Um it's a lot better than it should be. It's one of those that that you go in kind of thinking it's going to be the horrible animation uh junk that was put out um my early college years that everybody seemed to love but I thought was really dumb. Um but it the 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 the, the world that they created in this movie was pretty awesome. Um, the 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 animals look like, or the Pokemon look like they belong in this world. They, you know, it wasn't a weird green screen feeling to them. Um, I thought it was really neat. Uh, now, the story was certainly interesting. I did not see the twist at the end uh, coming, and I guess I should have, you know, knowing that Pikachu doesn't speak. Um, but maybe I always thought that Ryan Reynolds was going to be way too young to be that guy's father. Um, but uh, no, I thought it was pretty good. It was, it was interesting. It kept my attention. And um, I do wish there was a little bit more weird Pokemon stuff happening. I wanted to see some Charizards like burning people alive oh, or, um, you know, Squirtle squirting, 
squirts. I don't know what would the squirtles do. Um, but I just I just wanted to see some uh, some some more Pokemon stuff happening. But I I don't know the Pokemon world. I don't know if that's what they do. I don't. I, you know I I know you capture them in the in the Pokeballs, and I know that they say their names over and over again, and that's about it. Okay. Say their names. Say their names. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> They do, yes. They they yeah. do those things. Uh, squirrels they squirt water. They they shoot mm-hmm. water out of their out of their mouths. Yeah. Uh, apparently, they have an, an infinite uh, storage of water in their bodies somewhere because they always are able to shoot water. But uh, and for what it's worth, Sam um, Ryan Reynolds is uh, what am I doing that math? Twenty nineteen years older than the kid. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, he technically could be his dad. Yeah, still pretty young. young yeah, dad. yeah, yeah, it is, but not unheard of. No. Uh, so anyway, I'm getting distracted because I was on Ryan Reynolds' IMDb page and it was showing the Deadpool three trailer. Oh, it's yeah. such a good trailer! Like, oh, Holy it's crap! It's so good. Yeah. I'll just want to sit and watch it. Yeah. Uh, I do agree with you though. I I like that the movie doesn't it doesn't feel weird and green screeny like the yeah the do feel real. The world is strange. It it kind of feels like. I mean, I also I mean I watched the Pokemon cartoon in late uh, I guess like eighth grade to ninth grade tenth grade because mm-hmm. it was on when I got home from school. That was a cartoon back then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's been around a wow. long time. Okay. Okay. Our old. Wow. Yeah. 90, 97, 98. 90, really? 96, 97, 98. Yeah, the original the original Pokemon cartoon. Yeah. It's been around a while. Uh in fact, uh, let's see. I started watching it uh, the see the original Pokemon, yeah, 1997. Yeah, that makes sense. From 97 to well, it says 2023. But that's not entirely true. I think it's just um they're just counting it as all Pokemon into one, but yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's all super weird and futuristic, and you know it's legalized cockfighting. I mean, that's what that's what Pico, Pico, or, uh, Poke Battles are. Uh-huh. Just cockfighting. It's just legal. And uh, Sean, are you just wanting to say cock? I think he's wanting to say cockfighting. I, I think that's what it's sounding it's like. Fun. Yeah, it's a fun thing to say. Okay, potty mouth. It's fine. Yep. Yeah. Here we are trying to be a family show. Yeah. <laughs> Except Sam's already threatened to murder me. Uh and, but that's and I'm eating uh and I'm eating beavers. Nice. So nice. Family show. Duckies. Family I have show. a bucky ducky in my Jeep. Nice. That my mother in law gave me. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh but yeah, I agree, Sam. The 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 animals are they're they're fun and kind of I, I still have questions about Pokemon and I ask Declan all the time just to annoy him. Like, like, are because in the world of Pokemon, that means there aren't other animals, right? Like there aren't cows. Yeah. So they eat Pokemon, right? Like there are, Ooh. if there's any meat, yeah, they're, they're eating. Pokemon. Yeah. They have like, think about that. like at the beginning when you're, when the camera's driving past and you see like the big steer ones mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. the pastures, those are ones we eat, apparently. If you want a hamburger, that's what you eat. Well, I mean, it's the kind of the same thing, right? I mean, like, we don't eat dog or cat, at least not here. Yes. Yeah. We don't. Yeah. But we eat chicken, and again, cockfighting. Yes, we do. Um, and bullfighting, which we eat the cow. So it's kind of the same thing, but I, I'll ask them. I'm like, yes, yeah, so you guys, which, which Pokemon can we eat? And he's like, Dad. I'm like, uh-huh. what? Also, in a you know, in a society where Pikachu, or, uh, I keep saying Pikachu, where Pokemon are just running rampant, I feel uh-huh. like there would be poop everywhere. Right. I well, just... are they civilized enough to? Because you know, some of them have jobs. Like, I feel like maybe they've been trained. Yeah, it is interesting the level, because you know, like, like yeah, exactly. You know, those like those monkey ones, they're just monkeys. But then there's like other ones that are like bipedal and they are as tall as humans. And I just, I I also seem strange that there would be, if Pokemon are, 
are as smart as the movie makes us think and are as big and powerful as they are, then why would they ever be subservient to us as, as a race? But, you know, like the big... we can catch them in balls. I guess. And get them by the balls. That's right. Get yeah. them by the balls. All right, Andrew, what's your five word review? All right, I have my first one is Ryan's old ass is his daddy. Um, <laughs> <and> <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I just made that one up on the fly since you guys were talking about it. Uh, no, but seriously, it was, uh, it's not a five word, it's a little bit more, but good, even if you know nothing about Pokemon. Yeah. Um, and and I'm one of those people. Like I I don't know anything about Pokemon, um, other than the fact that my oldest son, when he was about seven, eight, nine, kind of went through a phase where he collected the cards. He didn't do anything with the cards, um, except look at them. I guess I because we didn't really we didn't know how to play a game of Pokemon. Like I didn't know if it was a card game or if it was just a whatever. Um, and then he sold it. He sold his whole collection to somebody who was in the same class or whatever. Uh, and then we just kind of forgot all about him until this movie came out. Interesting. Um, yeah. And so uh, this movie kind of became like he had a, my son had a book that was like an encyclopedia of Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So it told all about each one and what they did. And I was like, well, why do we really need the cards? if we have them in a book. But anyway, um, so uh, I kind of knew going into this what some of them could do and, and what they were used for and um, and all that. But I, even so, I, I didn't really understand Pokemon. And, um, and I think this movie is fine for people that are like, you don't know anything about this world. Um, it's still something that you can enjoy because the story, even though... I don't know that I feel really great about all the acting. Um, looking at it through a second watch, you know, the first time I kind of looked past some of that and I thought the story, the first time this story was a good story. It's still kind of a good story, but it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of a pull your heartstring type story at the end there. Um, and a couple moments throughout, but it's, you know, it, it's okay. It, I think Sam said it's serviceable. I think that's that's about accurate. You know, it's not something that I I want to watch a bunch, but it's good to see it every once in a while. Yeah, uh, I have a son who is fully in the throes of Pokemon. Um, he probably has over a hundred cards at this point. Maybe um, he's got one of those big binders, and each card has a slot. And every it feels like it feels like once a month, I'll come out into the loft and every card is spread out on the floor, and he's reorganizing the binder because he got one card, and it has to go in this one spot, and so now he has to take out all seventy or eighty or whatever. And I we, I, I do remember not that long ago we went to a uh, a used video game store. I just wanted to show him you know this store and uh, Gamers Alley, and um, Daphne really, really wanted this aerial uh, Funko Pop. And it's like a collector's Funko Pop. It's not like, um, you know, it's not like my Ash that I have here that is out of the box and that I play with, or don't play with, but, you know, like I can hold. Um, this is one of those, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> I play with all the time. Um, this is in like a glass box and that you keep it in the block in the box. And you know, it was like, it's like 25, 30 bucks or something like that. And so I was like, all right, sure. You can get it. You're just going to have to work it off. And so she, so Declan goes to the back where the Pokemon cards are behind a glass case. Yeah. And so he's looking, he's like, Oh, that one's nice. And that one's nice. So we get a, and they're having a tournament that night. They were having a big uh, magic the gathering tournament. So like oh, the fun. staff is kind of busy. Uh, so we we flagged this guy down. He finally comes over, and I said he wants to look at some of these cards and get a price quote because none of them have prices on them. So like they don't because and they don't keep prices on them because the prices change, mm -hmm. like stocks they 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 fluctuate like crazy. So he he picks three, then we take them up to the front and then he punches them into the computer and then you get the 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 cost. 
And so Declan picks these three, and so we take them up to the front. And so the guy looks at him, and click, 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 click. Okay, this card, this is $84. And I look at Declan, I'm like, no. <laughs> like, we were both floored. Like, Declan was floored. Like, he thought it was going to be, like, 15 And then he gets the next card, click, 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 click. This one's 90 Holy and crap. Like, Dude. And then he goes, click, 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 click. Uh, this one's 15 and he's like, oh, okay. And I said, I'll tell you what. We're not doing the other two. We'll do the 15. And Declan says, I have some cash. I have some, I have some money. So he also bought just a regular pack of cards and whatever. So he's got this card that's in a nice case that's in his, that's in his room. So, so we're, 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 we're fully invested into the, into the Pokemon thing. And there is a game, yeah, Andrew. Yeah, uh, I, I never could understand how to do it, though. So we bought him the Battle Academy game. Mm-hmm. And it, it has instructions and, and all stuff, but it comes with cards to play with. Now you can switch out the cards that come with the game with his, his own cards to to battle and stuff like that. So, um, but it's a point system. It's a battle system. There's math involved. It's fine. Every right. now and then he'll ask me to play, and I'll play, and he kicks my butt. Um, yeah, but yeah. It's, it's fine. So anyway, my five word review. Uh, fun buddy, fun buddy cop with Pokemon, mm-hmm. uh, and unique bonding with dad story. Right, I'm trying to make the okay. Yeah, I can see that. Now I'll say this: we've we've all now mentioned the story, right? Mm-hmm. The part of the story I think that we all like is the idea that dad is dying; he gets zapped into a Pikachu by a Mewtwo. Which, uh-huh. even if you don't know anything about Mewtwo's, in the kind of Pokemon world, it's the most powerful being on the planet, right? It has the power to do all of these things, right? Um, and it's a kind of an abomination from Mew and other stuff, uh, which is explained in the movie, I think, pretty pretty well. So, so we're so I think we're okay with the idea that that this is a dad son story. We just don't know it yet until the end of the movie. So yeah, the, right. which is which makes it kind of fun, right? Because it allows kind of both of them to kind of have their guard, both their guards down, because neither knows that about the other, which is cool. Mm-hmm. The part of the story that I I think is really dumb, but it's also I have to remember that this movie is aimed at Declan and not me, right? Is mm-hmm. that the idea that the bad guy's plan is to merge people with their Pokemon? Like that's the grand right. villain idea, and it's kind of dumb. Mm-hmm. It's it's a it's kind of a dumb thing, in 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 my opinion. Uh, I just that's the one part of this whole thing that I think is as I would as, uh, as Robert Downey Jr. said, not a great plan. You know, so yeah, it's kind of a. It feels pointless. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It I mean, I guess take over the city, you know, like like there has to be a big bad mm-hmm. for a movie like this. And there has to be a sinister plot. Um I just think that the 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 outcome is just kind of dumb. <laughs> you know, it's like I don't know. I guess, you know. I kind of get the idea that if the character, he's like, he's wheelchair bound and therefore he wants to put his, you know, mind into Mewtwo and then be powerful. I right. get that. I get that as a thing. Um, but merging people with their Pokemon just seems weird. Weird. Like why? Yeah. I why don't... did the Pokemon go into the people? What do you mean? Like why didn't the why why would we not want to keep our bodies and re- get the Pokemon power? Well, that's what he he thinks that the Pokemon are actually better beings than people. Right. That's right. why he was putting us zapping humans into their Pokemon. So like, like the people had their, you know, like when the girl got zapped into Psyduck, right? Her Psyduck, she could still only say Psyduck, right? But yeah. He was aware of who she was. Mm-hmm. It was, it's dumb. Anyway, like I said, it's it it's aimed at my it's my it's this movie was aimed for my eleven year old. 
right? Like what, they made it for him. What would be the worst Pokemon to get joined with? The flip, the floppy fish thing. Yeah, either Goldeen <laughs> or the um, I forgot what it's called. Where's Sam? Declan? I need Declan. Uh, yeah, the floppy fish. Yeah, I can't yeah. think of its name. That's kind of what I thought too. <laughs> I do have the Pokemon Go app on my phone. I could probably look it up, but um, yeah. Right. But because I don't know, do you evolve? Like, if you get zapped in, can you still evolve? Right. And if you're right. if you're a, if you're a humans person inside the thing. Then do you get to control when you evolve? Like, you know, like these are questions I kind of want the answers to, but I also kind of don't, which is fine. <laughs> right. Do you know how it goes? Uh, anyway, there are no Poke Stops near where I live. So I did, I tell you what, though, when Pokemon Go first came out, what seven or eight years ago? I played that game all the time. Oh, I yeah. I was into it. I was. I was into it. I'll still play it every now and then, but mostly Declan plays it. Uh, anyway, um, if one of you mentioned the acting, um, yeah, uh, Justice Smith, the the main kid in the movie, he he's basically playing the same character that he did in Dungeons and Dragons, just without an accent. Right. <laughs> with an American accent, or I don't know which one is his real accent, but because like he, you know, the, the, what is he in that movie in, in Dungeons and Dragons? He's, uh, you know, he's a, he's a magician, but Ooh. not very confident and things kind of right. break random. And he has a yep. crush on a white girl. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this movie where he's, He's pretty good, but he's also not very confident and, you know, makes some mistakes and <laughs> so shut a white girl. It's like, it's the same character and, and even has some of the funny quips. Like, so I'm going to play one of the, um, I'm going to play part of one of the clips here. So a Pokemon is not about skill. So you can do this. Good pep talk. Like that little thing right there reminds me a hundred percent of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh -huh. when, like Chris Pine says. All right, here's the helm. Now, if you don't attune, I don't get to see my family again, and we all die. Brilliant, you know, like those just those quick, you know, responses like that. Just it reminded me of that. But I thought he did pretty good as an actor. I thought the girl was fine, I guess. But she's also playing like a cartoon character, so I think she's supposed to be over the top. Because my gosh, was she over the top? I thought she was. Yeah, and, and I yeah, kind of chalked that up to maybe I didn't understand the world that much of, you know, the world of Pokemon. Because I didn't know if that was kind of, like you said, supposed to be cartoonish or, yeah, it was just a little much. I mean, it's an anime, right? It, it's an anime. Yeah. So yeah. People, you know, they they over talk, they overact, they, they you know. Now, the big, obviously, this is not Ash. Uh, you know, catch him and and his his team. So you know, it's it's you know, different. And maybe we get that movie. I don't know, but um. And there was kind of a parallel, and you guys wouldn't know this. And I've only seen part of the Pokemon movie where, um, spoiler alert: Ash dies. The kid what? dies. Why? And Pikachu is trying to kickstart him with his electricity. And so he's doing this thing where he's like pressing down on him. And so like in this movie where we think Pikachu has died, he's the kid's doing the same thing. It's like the exact same scene uh, almost. Um, and I thought, oh, that's they did that for people that saw that movie. The, the defibrillator moment. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Pretty much. So uh, anyway, um. I don't really have much else to say about the movie. It's just a fun little thing. And uh, if you like it, it's streaming on TBS right now. I had to watch it through YouTube TV. How did you guys watch it? It's also on, uh, if you have, so I I guess I pay for both Hulu and Disney Plus because yep, through Disney I Plus, a, yep. I have access to Hulu. Oh, okay. So, uh, so that's how I watched it. Okay. Same. Oh, good. So, yeah, I watched it through uh, TBS On Demand through YouTube TV. Yeah. Because I don't have Hulu. I do want to say, you know, going back to what Sam said, I watched the 
as we know, I, I have it on in the background just to see if I can catch some other things while we podcast. And looking at the scenes where we have Pokemon, especially Pikachu, um, it, it, it doesn't at all look... It even looks better, in my opinion, than than like the live action Lion King animals. Um, I think that the, the they really did well with the CGI in this because yeah. Pikachu looks like a real animal standing right next to him. Yeah, um, it, that's just every little hair, every detail is there on these uh, on these P, uh, Pokemon. It's it's really done well. Visually, anyway. Agree. Uh, I think what helps is that they're not real. Like, we don't get... There's not an That's un, true. You know, there's that, not an Uncanny yeah. Valley thing happening. Because even with right. Lion King, it's, a, it's like Uncanny Valley because they're real. So right. we know what a lion looks like. But the only basis for a Pikachu is a 2D drawing. You know, a cartoon. So... To us, like, like that Pikachu behind you totally looks real because, sure, um, why not? Um, and I'm also scro- I'm scrolling through the uh, trivia here a little bit. Uh, Pete Dione, a VXF, VFX supervisor at MPC, stated that in designing the Pokemon for the film, one thing that the Pokemon company was uncompromising on was that, quote, all Pokemon, no matter what the circumstances, need to remain adorable. Yeah, yeah, and they are. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. I mean, I don't know that I would call Mewtwo or Charizard adorable. I mean, some of them are not adorable, right? right. But like, or cute, or whatever. But they kind right. of are also. Um, I, I, <laughs> I noticed this, but I forgot to take the note. During Mr. Mime's interrogation, he mimics the Sharon Stone leg crossing scene from Basic Instinct. Right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> it's hysterical. I love it. And I, and I did notice that in the in the moment, but I, I just forgot. Again, when I'm watching these with the kids, I, it's so hard for me just to have my laptop and take notes because the kids want to sit next to me and, and talk and right. school. And so it's like, I'll just. I won't take notes. I'll I'll remember all the things I want to talk about. <laughs> sure. Yeah. At the time of production, there are over 800 Pokemon. It is reported that Detective Pikachu will only feature a little over 60. Oh, wow. think about rendering all of those in realistic. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. It also makes sense to keep it kind of small so that you, you know, because like, for us, right, the the dads that are watching this movie with their kids, we will probably not recognize, you know, the 300 that, that came out with the last expansion pack last year. Yeah. But we'll re- recognize the, the ones, you know, from the original cartoon or even Sam probably from playing like Smash Bros. Yeah. Right. On yeah. Game like Game. Hufflepuff or whatever that one was. Yes. <laughs> Jigglypuff. But yeah. Jigglypuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, but the Hufflepuff is a, it's um, uh, it's it's a badger or something. I think I do. Uh, I do like how some of them have names like Pikachu and, uh, you know, Charizard and Mewtwo. But then we have uh, other names that are, uh, I don't know, maybe not as creative. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Squirtle. Yeah, it's a. Turtle that squirts. Turtle that squirts. <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't know. <laughs> My favorite one is Ekans. E K A N S, which is uh-huh. snake backwards. Yeah. And it's a snake Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, let's see. The R in chemical R is a single acronym that stands for rage. Well, okay. I guess that's probably pretty. Accurate. Oh, interesting. The Charizard in the battle arena has a scar because battles are outlawed in Rhyme City, so his trainer couldn't take him to a Poke Center to be fully healed, meaning that at best he could he could have given him some potions to bring him back energy but not heal the damage. Oh, that's oh. kind of cool. 
Mm-hmm. That's uh, kind of sad. Yeah, yeah. Again, cockfighting. Um, some of the trivia is pretty fun here. I like it. Go check out the trivia. There's a lot. I mean, good there lord. Is, yeah. There is so much trivia. Uh, but I'm not going to read any more of it, or really all of it, because... What? Before being defeated, Ditto frantically goes through all the transformations he merged, oh, managed to do during the film, like the T-1000 does at the end of Term- Terminator 2. That's kind of cool. I like that. Uh, are you guys ready for some clips? Yes. yes. Good. I will play the rest of this. I'll play the whole thing. Here we go. A Pokemon is not about skill, so you can do this. Good pep talk. Okay, it has to choose you too, so make it want to be your partner. Yeah. Hey, Cubone. What's up, buddy? You know, not everyone can pull off wearing the skull of their dead relative, but, you know, you sure can. Yeah. So, interesting, interesting Pokemon that wants to do that, but there you go. Uh, here's some of that overacting I mentioned earlier. Man, she talks fast. I'm sorry. Stories like this spread fear, and they're afraid of fear. Sorry for that. But I don't edit. fear fear. I walk the walk, and I talk the talk, and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get the honest scoop, and that's the hard truth. I'm sorry. Who are you? Lucy Stevens. Reporter for CNN. Oh, uh, hey, you seem kind of young for that. I work for the CNN blog, making Pokemon listicles all day, okay? Top 10 cutest Pokemon. Yeah, my grandma loves those. Yeah, newsflash, they're all cute. Such a waste of time for someone with my nose for a story. There you go. Well, What's up yeah. with... It is, is kind of cartoony. It is cartoony, and it's, and it's, um, it's also like she's trying to play like a 1950s reporter. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, like she just needs a trench coat and a hat, right? And smoking a cigarette, I guess. Um, electrocute is this clip titled? I know you can't understand me, but put down the stapler, or I will electrocute you. Yeah, I like that. Um. Yes. Uh, alone. I forgot what this means. Oh yeah, this is uh, this is him being awkward, which again, very much like his character. But the docks can be dangerous. It's not the sort of place you want to visit alone at night. I'm actually pretty good at being alone at night. Nope, that did not land right at all. <laughs> it's not. It's not what I meant to say. Um. <laughs> oh man! And I, so I think Sam, you mentioned earlier. Well, I think before you watched it, you said you know that there's a rated R version of this movie somewhere. Yeah. Um, and I think um, well, we know that Robin Williams did that for Good Morning Vietnam. That mm-hmm. there was enough of him riffing that there's a PG, PG thirteen, and R version of those movies. And I think that Ryan Reynolds did something kind of similar, but you know this this was always geared towards children. That's why they have to keep it. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. PG. But and I think because there was there was only like one hell or damn or something in the movie, which which I appreciated because what was it we watched <laughs> earlier this month and there was a lot of cussing and <laughs> my kids were so annoyed by it wasn't that the teenage mutant ninja turtle one yes yeah, it was yes. the turtles yeah you're right yeah <laughs> my kids were so annoyed why are they cussing so much dad i don't know all right so let me get this right we're forced to listen to this spa music so your head doesn't explode and kill us all Sonic. your pikachu is so unusual Hey, you put that down. I am not giving you a massage. So, I I kept that last bit in just because I love I I, I didn't capture it, but I should have. Santa. Hey, you put that down. I am not giving you a massage. Yeah, without without context, that's uh that's a lot of fun there. 
So just put that. Yeah, I, I did kind of, you know, going back to what you just said about the language, I, when I took my kids to see this in 2019, we went to the theater to see it. And I honestly didn't know what to expect because of Ryan Reynolds. And I had, you know, just seen Deadpool two or something. (laughs) And I didn't, I didn't know what would happen in this movie. Um, But because of, because of that, I kind of feel like it wasn't as Ryan Reynolds y as maybe it could have been. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's well and but we've also seen the ones where he's too too much Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and I think this is a, a time of his life where he's he's doing the right amount. Because remember we, like we watched Hitman's Bodyguard and we liked mm-hmm. that amount of Ryan Reynolds. Yep. But then there was the was other Red Notice. Uh, was it Red Notice? It was one of those Netflix things, wasn't it? I, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Where we were like, that's too much. It was him and The Rock, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Rock. Yeah. Too much Ryan Reynolds. Like it was. It was yeah. over the top. It was too many quips. Too many whatevers. And he was mean, well, if I remember right. It was just mean-hearted. But then yeah. there was the other one where he was like a scientist, like a billionaire scientist, where he um, he was oh like, he gathered the Ocean's Eleven style team and yeah, and they were stopping bad guys, or whatever. And he had like the gravity gun, or whatever. Like, and he wasn't too bad in that one either. I remember the something six, something eight, something crew. Yeah. Uh, wasn't that a Michael Bay thing? Maybe I don't know. Uh, not no, that's not it. No, that's not it. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Go Sinister Six. So yeah, that's, I'm sure that's what it is. I have I I'm, I can't find it, but I'm not going to worry about it for much longer. Not a free guy. No, I liked him in Free Guy. We don't, yeah. I don't, we don't, I don't think we complained about him in Free Guy. No, Red no. Notice. That wasn't that. It was before that. That was that was Red Notice. Was the Six rock. Underground. Six Underground. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. See now, I kind of want to know how many of his movies we've done because it would have to be a lot at this point. We've done we've quite done, a few, yeah. We've done a few of his, yeah. So, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see, like, if there was a way. I'm not going to do it, but if there was a way to, like, see who is our most reviewed actor. Huh. You know, That'd be interesting. Find find some way to pull. We'll have our intern do that. Oh, I wonder if AI can do that. Uh, maybe. You know, like 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 Sam, you're using Chat GPT. Like if we give him give give him, if we give Chat GPT the list of all of our movies and then asked it to to list out the most you know, seen actors. I'm sure that we can do that. I I might I might play with that in, in uh, at work tomorrow cuz I have there you go. I have access to Copilot. Um, I might do that tomorrow and it'll probably not be like a Ryan Reynolds or the rock or something. It'll probably be some random actor, you know, an extra that's been in, you know, 25 of the 400 movies we've done or something like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, A couple more clips we got here real quick. Um, Don't worry. Psyduck psionic waves are causing hallucinations. None of this is real. All of this is real. Run! Now, I thought I thought that was funny, but also, this is another moment in a movie where we have created peril for the sake of creating peril. Because we know that the company was experimenting on 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 Pokemon, but these Pokemon were the size of mountains. Uh huh. We never see them again. There's there's no reference to why they would make Pokemon that big that are the size of small towns. I don't I never understood that other than to create peril for the characters. Right. I, I just it seemed strange, like a waste. Oh my well, god. And, and to... What else are they what other kind of experiments are they doing? You know? Right. I don't know. Again, maybe I'm looking too much into the Pokemon. Uh, last one. 
Come on. No, that's not fair. <laughs> okay. For the record, I have no guilt hitting a beady-eyed version of the woman I'm very attracted to. <laughs> Yeah. Clip. All right, time for this. And now for some more bad news. Ready? This is where we would normally play a game, except life has been busy for all of us this yes. last five days. Andrew's had concerts. Um, I've been uh, doing a lot of stuff. Sam's been doing a lot of stuff. It's just one of those things where it's just a yep. lot's going on. And so there's no game, and that's okay. So we're going to skip right over to that, and I'm going to screen this. Everyone! That's right everyone and everyone is now coming together to give this movie a score from zero to 10. And we will start with, as always, Andrew. Yeah. Well, um, the, the old IMDB has it sitting at a 6.5 out of 10. Uh, and I like it, but I, I don't know that I like it more than say the Ninja Turtle movie that we watched, um, which I scored pretty high. You gave it a six. Um, no, I'm sorry. You gave it a, an eight. It was an eight something, right? Yeah, an eight point one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I can't go near that. Um, but I think uh, the uh, this the sleep. Whether what it was the what was the one we did last? Uh, Slumberland. Slumberland. Yeah, I think I did score that one in the five ish range, right? You did five point two. Yeah. Yeah, but I, so I do like this better than that. I have to say. Um, so I guess six is okay. I'm going to stick around six. Let's say 6.2 okay. out of 10. All right. That's just under Mulan for you. Yeah. All right. Sam. I had a good time with this too. It was, it was decent. Um, I, I'm not as well versed in the Pokemon world, but I, I did appreciate the artistry in, in bringing this stuff to screen and not making it look too cartoonish. Uh -huh. um, so I've got to give it a 7.28 out of 10. Oh, so you like this better than the Turtles movie? Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> what was what was the Turtles movie? What did I give it? Seven point one two. Let's let's do a, a six point nine eight. Okay. Know. That's funny. Because last week you gave it a six point eight nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. All right. Uh, I like it a lot. Uh, not a lot, but I like it. And uh, as I'm looking back at the movies that we've done for this month, I actually probably like this one the best. I think I have the most laugh out loud moments. And honestly, it was probably the most enjoyable watching it with my family, which I'm taking into account. Uh -huh. as I can see that. Family movie night. Yeah. Um. And it was probably the one that they were most interested in also. I think we had probably the fewest kid interruptions. And normally they're good about just sitting down and watching a movie. Uh, the uh, Slumberland was rough, and the Turtles movie was rough because we're not used to watching movies on weeknights. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. it would have been better yeah. if I watched it on a Sunday afternoon. But Anyway, I'm going to give this one a 7, just a straight 7. <laughs> Uh, I like this movie pretty good. I think it's all right. And if, you know, the kids say, hey, it's, it's, it's Saturday and let's watch a movie. And they say, we want to watch Detective Pikachu. I'd be okay with this. I mean, I'll probably take a nap, but I'd, I'd, I'd be all right to watch this again. So, you know, if you got kids that like this stuff, if, you know, of that age range, this is a good movie for it. I, I, would, I, would, I think we would uh, all recommend... This. I mean, I, frankly, I think we would all recommend all of these movies that we did for the month. I, yeah, I mean, there wasn't a single one that I wouldn't, yeah. Yeah, really, I mean, and, and Andrew was the only one that really didn't like Slumberland. Um, but the rest, you know, we're all in the sixes and up, so that's that's all right. So it was a pretty good month, I think. It was a pretty good month. And yeah, uh, yeah so there we go. That's our that's our family, family movie night. Um, and that's the end of, of that. I'm very excited, though, for next month. Uh, this was Sam's idea, uh, which I think is super cool. So, uh, which means that the next month, uh, it'll have to be Andrew's idea. Uh, <laughs> because I came up with DC and Family Night. Sam came up with this one. These are movies. Now, here's the fun part, guys. 
and, and ladies who are listening, guys and ladies. The way that the calendar works out, May has five Wednesdays. And we typically record on Wednesdays. So yeah. we're going to get five of these movies. Okay. All right? So we are doing Star Wars adjacent movies. Because May the 4th be with you. May the 4th is coming up. And we've also already done all of the Star Wars movies. We've done right. them all. Every, all, what, 11 Star Wars movies that have been made that have been to theater. We, we're not doing the, the, the Battle for Endor, the Ewoks movie. We're not, we're not doing those. <laughs> um, so but what do you, explain here what we mean by Star Wars adjacent. So Star Wars adjacent are movies that are either just 100% ripoffs of Star Wars or <laughs> movies that I feel like are inspired by Star Wars or are um, wouldn't exist if Star Wars didn't exist. So Star Doesn't Crash? Mean, well, we've already done Star Crash. Um, <laughs> but but I'm saying like that's that's a, that would be Star yes. Wars adjacent. If if we had not already done Star Crash, we would do it here. I would be perfectly fine with doing it again, just so you know. Well, you weren't on that episode, but you <laughs> nope. were physically nope. there. I was there. You were there. Uh, please go back to episode 50 and, <laughs> and listen to our Star Crash episode. That was a good time. I, I still like to talk about that movie. It's just such a, a trip. So we're starting the movie, the movie. We're starting the month off with Rebel Moon, which is that Zack Snyder, the, basically Zack Snyder's version of Star Wars. Uh, so Rebel Moon. And I'll say this, of the maybe 15 people that I've mentioned or that have, you know, in passing talked about Rebel Moon, only one person has said anything positive about it, and that was my brother-in-law, who loved it. No one else that I have talked to has even remotely liked it, including Sam, right? You've already yep, seen it. Yeah, I've already seen it. So that's what we're going to do next week. Or our next episode. We're going to start with Rebel Moon. We're going to go on to Battle Beyond the Stars. Then we're going to do Disney's The Black Hole. Followed up by Spaceballs. Because why not? And then we're <laughs> going to end the month with Rebel Moon 2. Because that's now out. Oh, I didn't know there were two. Yeah, yeah. it's split into two parts. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So... We're gonna start it should, and end with some Rebel Moon. Should we, we shouldn't do Dune because technically Star Wars is Dune adjacent. You are right, and I thought <laughs> about that, but those movies are so flipping long. I know. I would. I would have respectfully declined. I think the only way we could <laughs> do I mean, legit, and we if there is if we want to do Dune, we don't. Then this is oh, seriously. This is what we would do. It, we would break it up into a half episode or like half, half the movie. Oh, I see. Okay. And like watch the first hour and a half. We stop when thing, this thing happens. Right. That's the episode, right? Like we would, we would take a whole month to do two movies. Yeah. We would have to, we would have to. Yeah. Because yeah. Cause Dune two is like three plus hours. Uh huh. Um, yeah, that's, that would be the only way I would do it. And I'm not saying we, we were going to do that. I'm just saying that's the only way that I would be willing to do it. So so that's what we're doing next week, our next month. We're doing Star Wars adjacent. So thank you, Sam, for that uh, really awesome suggestion. I, I appreciate it. Yep. So that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, then the summer is going to be weird because Sam's going to be out so much with uh, vacation stuff, as he always is during the summer. So, yeah, Andrew, we'll we'll have to come up with some fun stuff to do. And That's I'll when we do all the movies Sam hates, yeah. <laughs> or or do the opposite, right? Do the ones I love. So that ones you're, I you're, love. you're torturing me. Yeah. yeah. So. yeah exactly. uh, we're gonna watch Jurassic Park. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna watch Jurassic Park three just for Sam. No, yeah. uh, that's the one you hate. Now, right. I would have to come defend some parts of that movie. So. No, you wouldn't have. You wouldn't. There's nothing to defend in that movie. Yeah, there's some good the gymnastics. No, no, that's that's that's, that's Lost Rogue. Oh, that's, that's too, sorry. That's that was the first step in the wrong direction in the uh, 
but there is a part of franchise there is a westworld connection so yeah uh anyway uh that's it that's our show thank you all so much for for listening and for watching i should say um and speaking of watching go to our youtube channel where i will i promise update the channel i know i'm so bad at it um it's just it's so easy to do the podcast that to do the the video i actually have to do stuff and i'm lazy after 476 episodes i just i'm just so tired i'm just lazy so in a world where sean is lazy yeah <laughs> there you go <laughs> it definitely exists that world anyway uh, but go to our website, cheapsyreviews.lipson.com. There you'll find links to our social medias and stuff. Join us uh, there, Facebook, um, Instagram, all the places. Go to our uh, go to YouTube, also youtube.com slash cheapsyreviews. Follow us, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Leave us reviews. Super helpful. Uh, we're also on Good Pods. Uh, apparently, we're ranked really high in there, which is a total surprise to me, but if you like good pod, fantastic. I really appreciate all the support that we have there. Uh, but uh, that was a surprise to you. Every week I get an email. Congratulations, you're number two in all of entertainment or, or TV entertainment. That's so weird. It that is, is weird. weird. It is so weird because I advertise zero there. But um, people still listen to us there, which is really cool. So thank you for that. But that's it. That's going to do it. Uh, so thank you, uh, Andrew and Sam, so much for Family Movie Night. And thank you to my kids and wife for watching all these. Well, Sarah always watches them with me anyway. But for the kids uh, for watching them, this was cool. And they were also super excited to get to watch movies that Dad are gonna Dad's going to talk about on the podcast. So yeah. uh, that was pretty cool. So next week we're doing Star Wars Adjacent. Looking forward to that. So on behalf of Andrew and Sam, this is Sean saying thank you all so much for listening. And we will see you next week for Rebel Moon. This is Cheap Seat Reviews.